Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creative Nifty Numbers Family Math Night, and in this video I'm going to share with you the collaborative project that we did at my last Family Math Night event that I call Soft Dough Tessellations. And here is the result of that um, collaboration. Um, and actually, it's not the final result, but we'll get to that in, a, in just a minute. Okay, so a tessellation is when you tile a flat surface with shapes so that um, there's no spaces or overlaps. For example, my hexagons here tessellate um, because they fit together nicely without um, overlapping or leaving any space. And you don't have to have the same shape tessellate. You can obviously, like this one over here, have different kinds of shapes that tessellate. And then down here is my example of um, shapes that do not tessellate. So you can see in there are those circles, there's that space in there, so obviously that does not tessellate. Okay, so um, I'm going to share with you how uh, we did the project, um, and then I'm going to talk just a little bit um, about the math. So um, it's a pretty big project, and you're going to need to get some stuff um, prepared in advance. And the main thing, obviously, that you're going to need to prepare is the um, salt dough. So on our website at familymathnight.com, I have the recipe um, for the dough. Um, and I give real specific um, details in there about how much one batch um, can make, and then you can use that to determine um, how many batches you wanna make for your event. Okay, so you'll need to do that um, in advance, and then you can keep this in the refrigerator until um, your um, event begins. And then the other thing that you're gonna need to do in advance is create the cookie cutters, um, the uh, things that will make okay, um, the shapes that they're gonna tessellate. Now, I have um, some shapes that I have as cookie cutters, okay? Um, that I thought that maybe I could use. Um, but if you look at this one, it's got these little ridges on it. And I didn't want to have the ridges because I want my shapes to tessellate, to fit together really nicely. So I couldn't use this one. So then I went online um, to see if I could uh, buy some of these uh, cookie cutters. And there's a lot of different geometric shapes that you can get. The problem I ran into was that because I wanted them to tessellate, um, I needed to make sure that the edges um, the length um, of each side was the same. So if this is two inches, then I needed to make sure that the shape that I was gonna tessellate with it um, was also um, two inches. And I didn't wanna just have one shape tessellate, I wanted to have um, a couple of shapes. So, um, so I ran into a problem there and I figured, well, what can I do um, to solve it? And I decided that I could create my own cookie cutters. And so that's what I did. I created them out of, um, cardboard. So you can see here's my parallelogram. And then I also created um, some triangles and you can see how nicely um, those edges meet like that. Okay. So let me tell you how I created these. Um, the template for this um, that has the nets on it is on our website as well um, under the resources section. Okay. And so this is what those nets will look like. And um, I printed them out on regular paper because um, cardboard won't work in my printer. Um, but then after I printed the, them out and I made, let me show you here, um, I made a whole bunch of them. I made um, 10 of each shape. And so um, once I printed them out, I cut them out and I put it, um, I glued it on to cardstock or cardboard, not cardstock. It needs to be thicker than cardstock um, because kids are going to be um, pressing this and you want them to be nice and sturdy. Okay, so I glued it onto this, and then of course I cut out the perimeter, and when I cut out the perimeter, um, to make it easy to fold, I um, used a ballpoint pen and a ruler, and I scored those lines there, and then it makes it super easy to get nice crisp folds out of it. So like I said, I created 10 each um, of those. There are some tips that I have for you that I've learned. Um, when uh, I did this the first time, and then I, of course, I practiced first, so I made a whole bunch of these, um, these shapes. And what I learned was that the edges started to get um, moist, and then they started to kind of fall apart a little bit. And towards the end of making the shapes, um, it wasn't working quite as well. So what I did is I took tape, so you can see that there's clear tape, well, maybe you can't, but there's clear tape on here, and I covered each of the edges Okay, before using them. And then 
um, they worked beautifully. And uh, you can see that that whole bag that I shared with you earlier, that was used for a whole family math night event. And every single one of them is in perfect condition. Um, so it worked great. Okay, so, um, so uh, that's what you're gonna need to prepare in advance of the, um, of the event. Now you're gonna need to gather some materials as well. Uh, you're going to need, I used tempera uh, paint, so you'll need some of that. Um, you'll need small cups for the water that you're going to spread out um, on the table. And by the way, I used cafeteria tables and I set the table up close to wa um, water so that if we needed to, to change out the water, if it was getting really dark and dirty, uh, we could easily do that. Okay, so you'll need the, the water cups. And then I, over uh, several weeks, um, collected a whole bunch of these from egg cartons. And this is what I used to put the paint in. And then I spread those out on the table as well. Um, I also had uh, paper towels folded so that when participants uh, washed off their uh, paintbrush, they could then wipe it off um, on here. And that's the other thing that you're going to need, um, a whole bunch of paintbrushes. And I use uh, the paintbrushes with the smaller um, tips on them because these, um, these shapes are pretty small and I wanted them to be able to put details on them if they wanted to. You'll also need wax paper. And this is what you're gonna um, use to have them roll out their, their dough. So I had these kind of cut into like six by inches, six by six inch squares. And, um, and then, okay, um, like I said, that's what they're gonna use to roll out or press out uh, their dough actually. So my station facilitators, I actually had uh, three girls working the station. Um, two fourth graders and a fifth grader, and they're so cute because they showed up in little aprons because um, they knew that there was paint involved. Um, but um, what they did for me in advance of the event starting is they rolled that dough into balls that are kind of like um, the same size as a golf ball. So I use this as an example. This is the size they need to be. Um, and then they created a whole bunch of these, and then they put these out at the tables, they just laid them out on the table. So as participants came, then there was already a, a, a ball of dough ready for them um, to go. And of course they would replace them when the participants made their, um, their shape. Okay, so let's talk about that part of it. Um, in order uh, for the participants to, uh, to know what they were doing, uh, should the station facilitator not be available to talk at that moment, I had a whole bunch of table tents. And so these table tents are also found um, on our website under the resources section. But basically it describes the steps that they're gonna do. So the first step says, choose one of the cookie cutters and ball of dough. So they've got their ball of dough in front of them. They're gonna choose either the uh, parallelogram or the triangle. And step number two says, flatten the dough to a thickness of about a quarter of an inch. And I actually have on here a little example, a little measurement um, example there of what a quarter of an inch would look like. But basically, I'm gonna hold this up and do it. Um, they're just gonna press it down. I don't really have anything for them to roll it with, but it's kind of fun just to press it down like that. And they're gonna do it until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Okay, so you can see that just like that. And then of course they're gonna use the cookie cutter and they're gonna press in on the cookie cutter. And then this leftover stuff, um, they can, uh, my station facilitators collected this and then they rolled new balls out of it. Okay. So um, that's what we do with the leftovers. We reused it, we recycled it. And then it says, um, step number three is paint your shape, including the sides. Now, the reason why I wanted the sides painted was because when I put some of these together, uh, let me take this on here, um, uh, when I was uh, playing around with it, and you see how this side here isn't painted. When you put them together, sometimes you can see that white in there, and I didn't want to have any of the white showing. <clears throat> so it was easy enough to say, uh, paint the sides as well. And then when they were done painting um, their shape, then they handed this to one of the station facilitators. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, at this point, I said I had three station facilitators because two of them were manning um, this, the station. You could do this um, probably easily with, with just two station facilitators, but one of those facilitators is gonna be in charge of um, the pieces that get uh, when the pieces are done. So you could do this one of two ways. 
you can just save each one of these pieces um, and, uh, and let it um, air dry like this, or you can begin to put your um, tessellation together. And that's exactly what I did at my family math night event. Um, one of the station facilitators was organizing this um, so that when we left that evening, it was basically um, all put together and it just needed to dry. Now here is the sample that I did um, when I was experimenting to see whether or not I could even pull this project off. Um, and um, what I learned was um, it's a good idea when they're assembling this to assemble it on card cardboard um, because um, you want it to, to be a nice solid piece like this and the individual pieces are going to need something a little bit stronger to adhere to so that they don't end up falling apart. So that's one thing that I learned. So if you're putting this together at your family math night event, I highly recommend that you have that size of the cardboard and they can start laying it on that. And that's what we did here. Okay, so the other thing is, is that yes, these pieces are going to be painted while they're still in the um, squishy stage. Um, and that was the other reason why I experimented with this because I wanted to see if um, that would work, how they would dry. Now, there's two different ways that you could dry these. One of them is in the oven and the, the directions are on the recipe. And the other one is to air dry them. And I did it both ways. Again, I was trying to find out what worked best. They're, it turns out they're exactly the same. Some of these were done in the oven and some of these were done um, air dry. You really can't tell the difference. So having the paint on them in advance didn't change the final product. It works just fine. All right, so once, now when I air dried mine, I actually air dried them separately. And th these obviously don't have paint on them, but um, I air dried them separately and then I put them together. So that's the other option that you can do is air dry them separately or um, bake them separately and then put all of your pieces together. It doesn't really, um, turns out it doesn't really matter um, how you do that. Now, so that the pieces could stay together, I did have that cardboard, but I also wanted to, these, the pieces aren't, go, you're gonna find that the pieces aren't going to be um, perfect. And that's kind of, um, that's kind of uh, what makes it sort of fun um, and creative, is that it's not going to be totally perfect, and that's okay. Um, but what I wanted to do was to kind of make the, um, uh, put something in between here, the edges, so that um, one, they would all glue it together, and two, it kind of brought it a little bit um, together as well. And, and obviously the first thing I thought of was glue. So in here, I used white glue, and I just glued all of these edges together. And I actually, it turns out when the glue dries, it kind of shrinks a little bit. So I did it a couple of times, and then I thought, wouldn't it be kind of fun if I had colored glue? So I colored some of my glue. I used um, uh, food coloring and I put it and mixed it in with my glue. Can you see that? And there was blue and then I did some green as well. I just mixed it in there. And what I have here is the result of the yellow. Okay, and it does, it looks kind of cool. And then I thought, well, what if I tried hot glue? What would that look like? So using pieces here that don't have the paint on them, this is what it looks like when you use a hot glue gun to glue the pieces together. And, oh, let me back up just one second. This is what it looks like when I used my blue glue on there. Isn't that kind of cool looking? Okay, so you can see it um, quite clearly there without the other paint on it. Okay, so back to the hot glue gun. And then I discovered that I could actually buy hot glue in different colors. So, of course, I bought a whole bunch of it. And here's an example of using um, the red hot glue in there. To glue those pieces together. So then I thought, well, that's kind of cool. What would this look like if I um, put hot glue gun on the edges? And that's why this is not quite finished yet because I wanted you to see um, what it would look like with the hot glue and also without the hot glue. So this bottom part here, you can see that I've got red and I've got, and I used orange there to show you two different colors, orange glue hot that I used the hot glue gun with and I just stuck it in all the edges there. And this part up here is just white glue. So you can see how nice it looks simply with just the white glue as well. 
I am going to go back though and fill this in um, with the different color um, hot glue before I um, hand that over to the school where we did it. Doesn't that look great? Okay, so, um, so there's our beautiful project. Um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about the math. Now, shapes tessellate because the angles of those shapes um, fit together to make 360 degrees. So you can see right here, um, I have six equilateral triangles and they tessellate um, because there's no um, overlapping and there's um, no space left in there. And you can figure out the measurement of each one of those angles um, by dividing 360 degrees by those six uh, triangles and you're gonna get 60 degrees. And you can have uh, students confirm that um, using a protractor. Now you can do this part of the family math line if you want your students and your participants, participants to have um, some um, extra challenges as well. Um, you can also use this information over here to find the angle measurements of these other um, pattern blocks. And if you do do this at your family math line event, um, I would recommend having those pattern blocks on the table and then they can use them to figure out those angle measurements. Now this is a um, simple tessellation done with simple geometric shapes. If you're familiar with M.C. Escher, then you know that tessellations can get quite detailed, okay? So there's an M.C. Escher tessellation. Um, however, we kept it really simple for this particular project um, by using uh, simple geometric shapes. Um, so, have fun.